In the spirit of reconciliation, the Department of Employment, Small Business and Training recognises the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders, past and present, and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. The Growing Workforce Participation Fund is one of many financial and non-financial programs available through the Queensland Government's Back to Work program. Back to Work is designed to give businesses the confidence to employ Queenslanders who have experienced a period of unemployment and help workers facing disadvantage in the labour market. The program focuses on supporting ongoing employment opportunities for job seekers from identified target groups and to support businesses to build inclusive workplaces. The eligible target groups for Back to Work include young people aged 15 to 24 years, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, people with disability and long-term unemployed people. Eligible locations for the fund include regional Queensland, and the following local government areas within South East Queensland. Ipswich, Lockyer Valley, Logan, Moreton Bay, Scenic Rim and Somerset. Programs available through Back to Work include Back to Work incentives payments, including access to the Harrison tool for retention, small business short courses, the small business support pool, the pre-employment support program, job seeker support pool, and the Growing Workforce Participation Fund. The industry offering of the Back to Work program is the Growing Workforce Participation Fund, which is referred to as the fund throughout this presentation. This is the second round of the fund, which recognises the importance of industry engagement in creating long-term sustainable employment outcomes for people who experience greater disadvantage in the labour market there is $1.7 million in funding available through round two of the fund. One-off grant funding of $20,000 up to $200,000 is available to industry organisations or not-for-profit community-based organisations to boost workforce participation for projects that can assist with the breaking down of barriers facing the program's target groups in fully participating in the labour market. The fund enables and encourages collaborative projects and may include the participation of local governments, partnerships with regional industry groups and target representative groups, including organisations who represent identified groups. The fund will provide industry-led solutions to employment shortages and retention challenges in the Back to Work program target locations and provide greater industry-specific support for disadvantaged and vulnerable target groups. The fund will provide opportunities for industry groups to focus on their future while also providing job seekers with new pathways and opportunities. The department encourages collaborative projects and may include the participation of local governments, consortium partnerships with regional industry groups and cohort representative groups. However, applications must be submitted by an eligible provider. For those industry organisations and cohort representative organisations wanting to establish a consortium partnership, the application must be submitted by an eligible provider and only one application per eligible provider is permitted per funding round. The breakdown of proposed funding between the consortium partnerships must be detailed as part of the proposed project budget. Eligible organisations include the following. Industry associations, that is, an organisation representing an industry, including peak business and employer organisations and industry advisory bodies, such as industry skills councils, chambers of commerce and industry, local councils in eligible back-to-work delivery areas, community-based organisations and social enterprises. Grant funding is available for projects that can assist with the breaking down of barriers facing the target groups in participating in the labour market, including a strong focus on promoting and supporting retention. All projects must be evidence-based and have measurable outcomes. Eligible activities include projects that aim to increase labour market participation and engagement from the target groups, provide pre-employment support, 
address industry identified employment shortages or provide new methods of workforce planning and development and supporting resources. All projects are 12 months in duration. Funded organisations must specify target numbers of job seekers, employers and or employees to be assisted over the life of the project. In addition to these specified targets, the following standard KPIs will be applicable, including for the number of employees assisted, at least 95% of that target must be achieved. For the number of employers being assisted, at least 95% of that target must be achieved. For the number of job seekers assisted, at least 95% of that target must be achieved. And of those job seekers assisted, a minimum of 55% are successfully employed at the completion of the project. Other project KPIs will be established based on approved project specifications. The guidelines for funding provides a table with examples of eligible activities. This list is by no means exhaustive and we encourage applicants to think of projects that will suit the objectives for their industry. Eligible activity categories include projects that aim to increase labour market participation and engagement from the target groups. An example activity for that category may include development of contemporary solutions to overcome barriers and increase accessibility to jobs in the Queensland labour market. Pre-employment support projects, an example activity may include new programs and approaches that support the target groups through job matching, enterprise skills development, mentoring and workplace experience. Workforce development and resources, the development of attraction and recruitment strategies for the industry to create sustainable pathways for the target groups into employment. And projects that address industry identified employment shortages. Solutions that examine, explore and trial new employment approaches to industry specific employment shortages with the purpose of creating long term sustainable employment. Ineligible activities for the fund include work that is deemed core business for the applicant or partners. Any project or part thereof that has or may be funded under another government program. Recurring costs for the organisation. For example, ongoing staff costs not related to the project, established positions within the organisation, normal operating costs, including utilities and building lease costs and core functions of the organisation. The purchase of assets, capital equipment or significant assets, including buildings or vehicles. Retrospective payments for expenses already incurred prior to grant funding approval or for work already undertaken. Costs for consultants, contractors or other suppliers of the services that are financially associated entities with the applicant. Travel costs, including hiring and leasing of transport, airfares and fuel. However, in recognition of transport restrictions in rural and remote areas in Queensland, travel costs may be considered if it is critical to enabling full participation of the eligible activities. Costs associated with attendance at domestic and international trade shows and any other cost deemed ineligible by the department. It should be noted that funding from other sources must be disclosed. Funding is not available for projects, equipment and or services that are eligible for funding under other back to work or other Desbit funded programs or that are being funded through other initiatives. All the information just mentioned is contained within the funds guidelines and terms and conditions. These are located on the Back to Work website under For Industry, and we strongly suggest that applicants read the guidelines and the terms and conditions prior to submitting an application. There is a two-stage application assessment process. The stage one assessment involves assessing applications against the capacity to manage criteria outlined in the guidelines for funding. This includes evidence of financial viability of the applicant, organisational structure, governance, risk management and reporting framework and experience in managing government funds and other similar projects. The stage two assessment involves assessing eligible applications against the remainder of the assessment criteria outlined in the guidelines for funding. This includes project innovation, addresses and responds to industry need, 
outcomes and sharing best practice, cost, value for money, and matters of public interest. All documents to support your funding application must be provided at the same time as your online application. This must include, but is not limited to, a comprehensive project plan, including KPIs and a detailed budget, a project impact assessment plan, outlining what the project is trying to achieve, how the project will support economic and social outcomes, what success looks like and how it will be measured, what impact the project will achieve regionally, within the industry and for the target groups, risk identification and management plan, two years of audited financial statements, or if the organisation is a new entity and financial statements are not available, additional information may be required. Access to the grant applications portal is now live on the Back to Work website, so potential applicants can now register for their account. The online portal will also allow applicants to preview the application form and download a preview copy of the form. The application process is outlined in this following slide. Applications opened on Monday the 3rd of April and close on Monday the 29th of May at 5pm. There is no provision for acceptance of late applications after the closure date or the submission of further documentation. The application must be submitted by an eligible provider and only one application per eligible provider is permitted per funding round. Further information, including links to the guidelines and terms and conditions, is available on the Back to Work website. We also have a dedicated email address for you to send through any questions following this presentation. Thank you for your interest in the Growing Workforce Participation Fund. Please feel free to contact us should you require any further assistance.